Linear drumming, playing open-handed and playing in the pocket are some of the phrases that are common in the drumming community. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the drum terminologies or drum slang that might be confusing to some drummers, especially the newbies out there. What's up everyone, CJ here. If it's your first time here, welcome. I'm so glad you wanted to check out my channel where I try my best to help you become a better drummer and have more fun behind the drum kit. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It is highly appreciated. Please and thank you. In this video, we're going to go through five pretty common phrases, slang, or overall terminology that some of you might have never heard of before, or at least don't really understand what they mean. So let's start with the first one. Halftime feel is something that the drummer or the entire band applies to the song to give it, just like the phrase says, a halftime feel. It usually makes the song a bit heavier and it can be a really cool transition from one part of the song to another. This is common in a lot of different genres. For example, a lot of metal bands have something called breakdowns in their songs. And usually that means they apply the halftime feel to that breakdown to make that part of the song extra heavy. So, for example, let's say you have a tempo that goes one two, three, four. And you play a solid beat with the metronome with the snare on two and four. Just like this. One, two, three, four. Now, if you want to apply the halftime feel, just move the snare hits to every third beat instead. So it goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like this. And this is how it sounds like when I go back and forth between playing regular time and halftime feel. So since I'm from Sweden, I didn't know about some of these phrases until I saw some English speaking drummers talk about this on YouTube or when I moved to Los Angeles to study music. And I think a lot of non-English natives don't hear about these phrases because they're not usually called the same in their language. So it's only natural that they don't know about them. But something I heard a lot from American drummers was linear drumming. And basically, linear drumming means that you play the drums with each limb playing individual hits. You don't hit the hi-hat together with the snare or the bass drum. For example, the easiest linear drum groove most beginners learn is a classic disco beat. Since linear drumming is individual hits with the arms and legs, it can actually give the effect of more flow in the groove and make the groove sound more open, if that makes sense. It also gives the drummer a chance to place accents in the groove that can otherwise be tricky to play if you're playing a fast groove and with all limbs playing together. Let me show you an example. Shedding can mean a lot of different things for different drummers. A practice room for drummers is usually called the drum shed or the wood shed because of this.
Basically, shedding is another word for drum fill or short drum solo. You might have heard a phrase like shed session, and that's usually when a group of drummers get together and trade drum solos with each other. It's like the drummer's way of trading fours, and if you don't know what trading fours is, there's a bonus phrase for you. It's very common in jazz music, where every musician plays four measures of solo each, and between every soloist, the drummer plays four measures of drum solo. So if you know three, four or more drummers, try to get a shed session going. It's a chance to show off all those crazy drum fills you've been working on and it can be a lot of fun. The first time I heard about open hand technique or open hand drumming, I thought it was something like this. But no, open hand technique is actually something we drummers do all the time. As soon as you move your dominant hand over to, let's say, a ride cymbal, you're playing open-handed. You're not crossing your hands anymore. Some drummers actually put their main hi-hat on the right side of the drum set and play open-handed like this because it feels more natural to them. But open-hand technique is also something that a lot of left-handed drummers apply if they're playing on a right-handed drum set. Usually a left-handed drummer would play the drums just like this, but reversed. But if I would play open-handed, I wouldn't cross my sticks like this anymore. I would play like this. Left hand on the hi-hat, right hand on the snare drum, and right foot on the bass drum. You can see left-handed drummers like Simon Phillips and John Blackwell play on right-sided drum sets open-hand style. Also, a lot of right-handed drummers use this technique, like Dennis Chambers and Marco Miniman. I do it sometimes, especially for some drum fills, but I don't play a lot of grooves intended with open hand technique. It's definitely fun to experiment with and you can actually come up with some pretty cool grooves with the open hand technique. But personally, I wouldn't really recommend a right-handed drummer to focus too much on practicing open handed if they're not gonna use it that much anyway. But hey, that's just my opinion. You do whatever you want. This one I didn't hear about until I started my studies at Musicians Institute in Los Angeles in 2011. None of my drum teachers in Sweden had ever used this phrase, so I had no idea what it meant. The first time I heard it, it was during my third week of school, and I had a private lesson with my teacher, Fred Dinkins. And he said to me, man, CJ, you've, you've got a great pocket in your groove. And I was like, ah, oh, thanks, man. What? So, pocket has a few different meanings, and it can differ from musician to musician. I think originally, playing in the pocket means that every member of the band plays completely in sync with each other and they groove together. If you listen to a band and it all just sounds good and feels good, the band is playing in the pocket. And when it comes to playing in the pocket as a drummer, as long as you can stay in the groove without playing out of time, you play in the pocket. The way that Fred explained it to me, and I love this explanation, is that imagine the shape of a jeans pocket. The pocket represents a beat from a metronome. And then you picture three lines, one at each end of the pocket and one in the middle. The line in the middle means that you're playing on the beat with a metronome. The line to the left means that you're playing behind the beat. And the line to the right means that you're playing ahead of the beat. Playing behind the beat doesn't mean that you're dragging the tempo. It means that you play with a more laid back feel to the groove. And playing ahead of the beat doesn't mean that you're rushing the tempo. It means that you're pushing the groove just a little bit without playing out of time. Being able to sense and play all of these different feels means you have a good pocket. For example, let's say you're playing a song and the tempo for the song is 90 BPM. It's a funky song and the feel of the song is supposed to have a laid back feel. If you're playing with a click and you play right on the beat, like really quantized, you're not playing in the pocket, even though you're playing perfect time. Let me show you an example of playing right on the beat and then slightly behind the beat to give the groove a looser feel to it.
All right, my friends, I hope that answered a few questions you might have had about these drum terminologies. If there are any drumming terms that you have a hard time understanding, or if you think that I missed some more important ones, let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer those questions to the best of my ability, or even make a follow-up video to this one with more drumming slang. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're not a subscriber yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated whenever I release a new video. If you want to check out one of the easiest but also most powerful linear patterns for a drum groove, check the link right here. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and good luck with your drumming. I'll see you soon.